Redditors in interracial relationships, what was the biggest cultural adjustment you had to make? I'm 3 stroke 4 white, 1 stroke 4 black, one of my exes was black. Race was definitely on his mind on the daily, that took some getting used to. To be fair, he's used to being the only black guy in a sea of affluent white folks. He is a professor, we got a lot of stares. They weren't always friendly stares. A different ex was Mexican. He lived with his abula and she didn't speak a word of English, so she silently followed me around. She was a quiet little ninja. After a while I realized she was trying to offer me food. She ended up giving me a plate of food every time I came over. Every time. Even to just drop something off. I loved her. She also covered my motorcycle with a blanket when I came over. She cleared a spot in her garden for me to park. She sent me home with her homegrown fruit. I miss her so much. Best culture shock ever. We're breaking up but me and your abula will remain besties. My ex-boyfriend of 2 years was Chinese. And I'm white. And southern. While he lived most of his life in Chicago. We had some minor things. Like he would make fun of how much cheese I ate and I made fun of how much he learned to love sweet iced tea. But the one cultural norm we didn't even realize we didn't have in common was taking food home from special events. For white people. Food left at the end of a wedding event banquet is for the host, whoever's paid for it, to dispose of dispense how they like. In Chinese culture, master go boxes are distributed and everyone takes home whatever they want. I remember being mortified at a wedding when my BF just snagged an entire, an opened box of cupcakes to take when we left. In my mind he just stole cupcakes. What was so remarkable was that I thought he was being cheap and he thought I was being paranoid. And we never, ever chalked it up to cultural norms. Learned this from a totally different also Chinese. Friend after we'd broken up. Mexican here my family is big on taking leftovers home. It's not uncommon for say, an uncle who can't make it to ask one of us to grab him a plate. One I can answer. My partner is from Zimbabwe. I'm from Scotland. The biggest culture shock by far is how every older woman is called Mbua, Gran, and every older man Sekiru, Grandpa. From what I understand their language, Shona, doesn't seem to have a word for aunties, uncles or cousins. Everyone is just your sibling, parent, grandparent or a stranger. Makes it a nightmare to work out what the real relations are. Not a current relationship but a previous one. I'm white and he's Hispanic. Meeting his family was really when the cultural differences showed. His entire family was super welcoming. Immediately I was included in everything and made to feel like part of the family. That was definitely not the norm in my other relationships. I found out that even if I'm stuffed full, if his mom or aunt offered me food, I better take it. To refuse for any reason was extremely rude. Authentic Mexican food is amazing. We did go to a Hispanic dance club together once and I was treated like trash by everyone present because of being white. But that was the only occasion of people disapproving. We broke up because he's a terrible person. But I still miss his family. With my exes, I learned to eat small first portions and or skip the previous meal. Because it's complimentary and usually expected to go back for seconds. My fiancé is black. I'm white Asian. Everyone from her family is very loud but in a loving way, especially in public. So much laughing and clapping for no reason. I love it so much. My Wajan family is very quiet and reserved and doesn't show much affection. Being in public and getting stared at is the biggest adjustment. Also the food. Anyone else love neckbone? That's gonna be an interesting wedding. I am dating a girl whose parents are from East Boston. They call pasta macaroni and red sauce pasta sauce gravy. WTF. Meeting her family. Lots of hugs. The family is important. You always compliment how beautiful the mom is and eat all of her cooking. When the dad drinks then you must drink. Anytime they invite you to an event then you drop everything and go or witness their off. Her meeting my family. Shoes come off the second you enter the house. Be prepared to gossip with the mom. Constantly receive a small sentence of wisdom from the dad. I am Vietnamese and she is Venezuelan. Both families agree we would have beautiful children. My wife is Colombian. The whole drinking with her dad when he drinks thing is spot on. I'm not even a big drinker and he constantly offers even when I am there for the most mundane reasons. The sadness in his eyes the times I didn't accept was heart wrenching. 
white male married to black woman here. We have been together since 1988 and have a 19 yo daughter. I am not sure there were any real cultural adjustments. I have read about people in interracial relationships getting all kinds of blowback disapproval but we've not experienced anything significant. My mill finds fault with virtually anything but that does not seem cultural though. My mill finds fault with virtually anything but that does not seem cultural though. Yeah, that characteristic is intrinsic to mills in general. My husband is Mexican and I am white. The biggest thing we genuinely notice and laugh about is how Christmas is handled. His family. Mass chaos. Everyone opens presents all at the same time. There is literally trash and Christmas paper everywhere. My family. Slow. Meticulous. Everyone patiently waits their turn to open their gift. We legitimately have someone assigned to trash bag duty. Trash bag duty is a sacred position in my family. We just celebrated it passing from my dad to my eldest brother. My ex-boyfriend is Japanese. Him and his family were very very proper, clean, and etiquette. The biggest thing was they were never really satisfied with his accomplishments. Every time he did something good they would always want more from him. Imagine the level of parents unsatisfactoriness a slider under the world map that it smacks is the Asian Far East. Well we have some funny ones that we both laugh about. I'm black Hispanic and he's white. There was a lot of confusion when it came to code switching. For those who are not familiar, it's when you change the way you talk depending on your cultural audience. I am guilty of this and he often does not understand the slang. I wear a bonnet when I sleep to protect my natural hair, and although he completely supports me on my natural hair journey, the look on his face when he first saw me in one that still makes me lol. Another funny one is how black family functions work. My family is devoutly Christian and he is atheist, he's very respectful when it comes time to bless the food but is blown away that 100 people will hold hands and that the prayer will last like 10 minutes. He was blown away by the sheer amount of food available at my family's thanksgiving. It's not uncommon to have the full soul food experience so we have everything. Turkey. Fried chicken. Ribs. Ham. Sweet potatoes. Spaghetti. LOL. Dressing. Not to be confused with stuffing. Mac and cheese. Potato salads. Greens. Cornbread. Rolls. And like 4 or 5 desserts. We also cannot seem to agree on whether or not spaghetti is a side dish or an entree. I will eat them as both. But was raised eating it with chicken or fish. As for me. I could not get with the program when it came to the culture of rural drinking. Farming and camping. I am from the city. I also hate that he has often heard men of color tell me I'm wrong for being with him. And his grandfather refuses to meet me because I'm black. He actually stopped watching the Celtics play when they let Blacks start playing. So there's that lol. Dang. Reading your description of Thanksgiving made me mad hungry, and jealous that I'm not in your family. I'm Hispanic. My husband is Caucasian. When someone in my family is sick, the whole family shows up. We all sit in the waiting room for our surgery, come by the house with food during a recovery. When his own father had a cardiac cath my husband didn't go with him even though he had the day off work. I went with his father and his mother and he thought it was so extra for me to go. His mentality is that I can't do anything if something goes wrong. He said if something did go wrong his mother would call him. In my family it's a show of love, respect and support to be at someone's sick bed. Even for a routine medical procedure. His mother didn't find it strange. His sister didn't go either. It's just weird to me. When his grandma had a hip replaced he went to visit her in rehab only one time and she was there for two weeks. If it was my family, we would take shifts so she would have at least one visitor per day and one home cooked meal. Miso is Filipino. I had to adjust to all of the typically normal things his family does, i.e. leaving shoes at the door. I wasn't aware that what I was normal to me was rude to them, so I had to shift my habits to be more tolerable to them. Also, the frick ton of food that was made during holidays. I'd be bringing home trays of pancit or lumpia to my family and it would take a week to finish. Whenever my mom decides to have a small family BBQ, all the neighbors end up stopping by to eat a plate and then take home a plate and she still has enough food to last the week lol. Thank god I took after my Filipino side when it comes to my metabolism lol. My ex-boyfriend was white and I am a black female. He was also 8 years older than me. 
There weren't any culture shocks but these are some things that got old fast. Random black men coming up to us at bars to try to provoke an altercation because they want to see if he'll react in a way that convinces them that I hate black men. I don't. People assuming I was only with him for money when he didn't make that much money. I notice a lot of people assume any white man over 30 that is well groomed and fit is loaded. It is hilarious. White women hitting on him in front of my face when it was clear by our body language that we were together. They would pretend like they somehow did not notice him hugging me or us dancing or something. It was almost like they were testing me or trying to show some sort of superiority over me in an open social setting. It was very strange. Other white men giving him the what the frick are you doing with her look. Random people coming up to us to tell us our kids would be beautiful or you two are so adorable it's cringy. I could go on and on. I dated a black girl for a little while, I am a white guy, and black dudes would always walk by and give me high fives and crap. I thought it was hilarious. Never really noticed other white guys giving me any weird looks but I live in a super progressive city. White trash married into a Hispanic household. Everything is different. They throw parties for everything. High school graduation was a huge deal. I had to convince my parents to come because I needed a ride home afterwards. His family was shocked. We don't cook when people come over. Just buy some pizza. His mom might kill me if I throw a party without cooking a bunch of homemade food. Sleepovers. Family coming over. Then it's assumed they will stay the night. Totally threw me off. Our family barely visits and when they do it's for a few hours then they're gone. Someone's pregnant. Or some huge parties and lots of gifts. My family. That sucks better figure out what you're gonna do. Kids party frick your lots of games and food and cake and gifts. My family. Oh cool here's a t-shirt I have work so I'm gonna leave now. Family member needs help. Their family best go help. My side. The most you'll get is a that sucks there's no helping each other. Been about 6 years now and I'm still learning. I was raised up a late and the Hispanic family sounds like mine. Even though I have been called trailer trash on a few occasions. Different understanding of time. Edit. To be clear she is Latina and I am white. Doesn't make me mad. It's just a difference in culture. It's an adjustment I have to make. I'm black and I'm currently dating a white guy. His stepdad is a white supremacist. So going to his house always feels a little awkward. But yikes. That has got to be rough. Sorry you have to deal with that. You should move to Atlanta. We love everyone lol. I dated a guy from Iran pretty seriously for 4 years. He was thoroughly westernized since his parents brought him to live with them in the UK as a toddler and moved to the US when he was still a child and he is a US citizen now. The biggest ongoing shock was realizing how many violent expressions we casually use in America that he would worry could be misinterpreted if sent by something that could be intercepted. No texting you'd the bomb or mind blown for fear he would get in trouble. Which also made talking about some news events by text rather difficult. The extra sad thing is, I can't say that he's wrong to be that careful, given the tensions between the countries. The other huge shock was when his mother got cancer and used it to guilt him into leaving me to move back in with them and marry his mother's niece from Iran. He's adopted so at least the genetics aren't scary, but, still, cousin. I'm Mexican and my boyfriend's white. The appropriate time to show up on time to social things is continuing point of contention between us. On time to me means showing up 30-60 minutes after the time we're invited. He tends to show up exactly in time or early. My Mexicanness has taught me not to show up on time or early because uh, the person who invited us isn't ready and b. By showing up early, you will be put to work setting up. The weirdest thing is the level of excitement other Vietnamese men have over our relationship. When we go out holding hands he always gets the nod from other Viet men for dating a white woman. It's really freaking weird. Basically Asian men are rated the lowest in terms of attractiveness for a majority of white women. This is further reinforced with surveys, YouTube videos, and just interacting with society. LOL his culturally oblivious parents grandparents had to adjust more than I did. I'm aboriginal Aussie and my dude is 4th generation Euro Australian. But on a serious note, probably the liberal attitude with money shook me the most. New cars every few years. Holidays overseas for shoots and giggles. New gadgets every year etc. 
They sound like rich people more than being typically white tbh. I'm also 4th gen Euro Aussie and my family are stingy as frick. When I first met her family, I thought something was wrong fishy about them. Why are they so close? Why do they see each other so often? Why do they have tons of people over for food and drinks for even the smallest of occasions? Why is there so much laughter? Turns out there's nothing fishy about it. They are just Puerto Rican. Regarding the food, the only adjustment I had to make was on my belt. My god that food is good. Kissing everyone. Hugging everyone. Talking all the time. Let me have my designated British personal space and a good handshake. My girlfriend is in a very Hispanic family that is fairly new to this country been here for for 28 years but none of them were born here, and I'm white. I don't speak Spanish so have no idea what they're saying but they think it's cute. They also think I look like a movie star when I'm moderately attractive at best on a good day with proper lighting and a gentle fog. Moderately attractive at best on a good day with proper lighting and a gentle fog. Love it. Not being as close to my partner's family as I would like. In my culture, family closeness is very important. My family welcomed him with open arms immediately, because that's just the way it is. Within minutes, he was considered part of the family. Meeting his family was good, but I didn't feel immediately welcomed. It was tense and serious. Although they are very kind people and they now like me, there's still that closeness that's missing. The way my family is to my partner, is the way I would ideally would love his family to be towards me. Edit. He's born and raised in India and I am Afro-Latina, born from US. Wow that's actually very surprising to me. I'm Indo-Canadian, Indian raised in Canada, and pretty much all Indian families invite and laws with open arms. You're pretty much drowning in family events with them lol. You're guaranteed to gain like 5 pounds each weekend due to them. My neighbor is a white guy who married an Indian woman and he seems busy with her family quite often. White guy raised Catholic married to a Jewish woman here. Does that count as interracial? Maybe not. Anyway. Figuring out how to do Hanukkah, Passover, Easter and Christmas with the kids and extended families and make sure everyone was comfortable and getting what they wanted took us years of effort. We finally got into a good holiday rhythm after we'd been married for 10 years or so and had a couple of kids. Just throwing this out there, in the eyes of the Jewish people, if your wife was Jewish at the time of your children's birth, they are Jewish no matter what. Even if they later denounce Judaism and become Buddhists, they will still be recognized as Jews. I used to date a Japanese girl. I had to get used to the fact that her family, especially her father, were never going to accept me. He literally called me fat white poor boy as a nickname. That's just cruel. I hope you guys ended it amicably. I'm black raised in a super agnostic household and my boyfriend is white raised by Jehovah Witnesses lol. They are low key white trash I still love them though. All the doors in their house are curtains and there's a couch on the front lawn. ORV caravan that doesn't run in the back. Their back lot is honestly a junkyard you could probably build a bike from all the crap back there it's pretty cool. I guess the biggest change was the food. There's never any hot sauce for the unlimited cup of noodles. His grandma doesn't seem to know what seasoning is. Everyone is always barefoot, even when they're outside like in the dirt. Also we aren't allowed to swear or listen to rap music while his grandparents are home. They think we're always having sex we're alone so no sleepovers lmao. We always have superficial conversations when we're together with little dumbass jokes about the weather. Jehovah's Witness also don't celebrate holidays even their own birthdays. I told his grandma happy mother's day and she looked like she wanted to kill me. It's wild. That's a bit more than low key white trash. But it's sweet that you love them anyway. Holiday dinner times, lol. My husband is white and I'm black. Our first Thanksgiving with his family was a shock for me because we got there at 2pm and were late. They had already eaten and packaged up the food. But meanwhile, his first Christmas with my family, dinner at my aunt's house was scheduled for 6pm. We got there at 6.30pm. Dinner didn't actually start until like 8pm. This was his introduction to CPT. Colored people time. For those unaware, unsure if there's an updated term, but I still hear it so. Never dated my own race. Didn't decide on it. 
It's just how it happened. My first boyfriend was from a Muslim country. It was illegal for us to be married, so the realization later on that there was no real future for us soured the relationship. My second boyfriend's parents were very strict and controlling. Mixed raced, they didn't really celebrate any cultural traditional events, so there was no reason to invite me over. Also, they prioritized education over anything else and again, our relationship was kept secret. I'm currently dating a great guy from the US. I'm regularly dealt with a hand off culture shock, as does he. I take my shoes off before entering any house. His family insists that the kids start dinner first, when back home. It is always the elders first. They expect me to unwrap presents in their presence during Christmas is horrified me. And on my birthday, he thinks it's rude when I slurp my food. I encourage him to slurp his food in Asia. He does so many things my culture considers taboo and I can't help but point that out to him. But it's so interesting to learn about each of our cultures this way. We've gotten along with each other pretty well so far. Hispanic women get offended if you don't allow them to serve you. So instead of taking more food like I, Italian, I'm used to, I have to ask to have more and it'll be served to me. I went over my Dominican friend's house and her mother accused me of thinking she was a bad host because I tried to serve myself, so I feel yeah. It was so confusing. I'm Filipino American and my fiancé is Argentinian. I have to remind myself that puto does not mean rice cake in Spanish. As an Argentinian myself, I laughed a lot. Tortillas are in the towel next to the food. Don't grab it thinking it's just a rug towel you can use. All the tortillas will end up on the floor and others will be pee. How racist my own white family is. When I introduced my then half Latina half black girlfriend to my family, my dad proceeded to tell me how difficult it would be to marry a Latina, how their family structures are really hard to deal with, and that I should think strongly about dating other women. I dated her for a year proposed, and then we got married. They still aren't supportive. We live an hour away from most everyone, and they still haven't come to visit, despite multiple invites. Yet they take a trip nearly every month to visit my sister who lives 7 hours away. Jokes on them. Hey tacos for days at our casa. This thread should definitely include intercultural relationships. I'm Thai dating a Chinese guy, both born and raised in Canada. And there are so many things I was clueless about when I started going to his family's home for dinner. There's different mannerisms like tapping the table with two fingers when tea is being poured for you. Holding bowls of food with two hands when giving taking it from someone and even things like not breathing exasperated breaths at the table. I had no clue about these things as my parents are very very Canadian. Cultural wise. And his parents tend to be more traditional. So definitely dinner mannerisms were a big cultural adjustment for me. Not in one now, but most of my relationships have been with upper middle class white American men. I'm first generation, working class, Afro Latina. Biggest struggle for me was how formal their families are. At my house, we're super casual. Grab a plate, pop a squat, let loose. We're also physical with each other. We cuddle, we hug, we're playful. Oh, and we DGAF about your background. We've got ex-cons, people in the church, working professionals, you name it. But their houses? Oh dear, functions felt like job interviews. The conversation was always what degree were you working on? What companies were you applying to? How's your retirement account? I'd sit there like, do you people even know each other? Where's the music? Man, I want some rice. Now, I still think men of all ethnic backgrounds are delicious, but those experiences taught me that I whatever family I marry into must be more on the casual side. Like, can I take your mom out for a burger and a target run? Or does she only do drinks and Nordstrom's? I want his family to truly be my family too. None of that. I hate my mother-in-law stuff. Man, I want some rice. You got me rolling over here. Also, it sounds as though class had something to do with their family dynamics as well. My sister's dating an Indian dude. She's still figuring out how to deal with people being openly racist towards the guy. I feel for both of them. She also finds it jarring how he'll just let pretty much anything go instead of calling people out on it, because if someone with dark skin objects to being treated poorly by the wrong person, that's a recipe for getting hate crimed.
I'm Indian and my fiance is white American. Her maternal grandparents are from Midwest and one day they asked her if I was from the religion that has multiple wives. Her dad who was sitting around the corner was laughing his butt off while my fiance was mortified to even answer that realizing his ignorance. White girl with Chinese so here. At first, it was having to deal with the looks from the older generation Chinese folks, and white folks too, let's be honest, because when we first started dating, it was really unusual to see an Asian dude with a white girl, having his family consider me a phase and telling him he should be dating a nice girl from Hong Kong. The huge, multi-course family dinners that usually involved some dishes I wasn't familiar with, squab, shark fin soup, sea cucumber, and lasted for hours, receiving the lysi, red envelopes, which I always find embarrassing because receiving gift money without giving anything in return isn't common in my family. We always give gifts in return if we receive one, and the red envelopes are usually given to us because we're not married yet. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.